الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ذواتا أفنان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما عينان تجريان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صدق الله العلي العظيم So there are many rivers and springs and fountains in paradise, numerous ones. Some of them have been mentioned by name in the Quran. Others are not mentioned by name, but the Quran in several chapters and several verses keeps repeating reminding us about these rivers and fountains and springs. In more than two dozens of verses in the Quran, we have been reminded that Jannatin Tajri min al Anhar. Always, always when God describes the dwellings, the homes, the conditions of paradise, he emphasizes on this that they are going to be placed and lodged in gardens where, where then rivers and streams they flow underneath them. One reason rivers are constantly mentioned in paradise, the, the rivers of paradise are mentioned in the Quran, it's because of the continuity. When you look at the river, what do you see? The river, the water is raging, is moving, streaming, and this is an indication, illustration of what? Of continuity, freshness and continuity. The water is not, God did not say a lake, there is a lake in paradise. Buhaira, or lake. He always says, anhar, anhar, rivers, streams, because the river moves, sometimes very raging water very fast, very quick. And this is an indication of the continuity and the freshness of paradise. There is no stagnation in paradise. So, before the believers enter paradise, they are going to face the very first, mount, the very first fountain and pond. What is the name of that pond? It's mentioned in the Quran. The shortest chapter of the Quran has three verses. What is that? Ahsant. Al Kautha. Inna a'tainak al Kautha, fasalli li rabbika wanha, inna shani'aka hu al Abtar. Kautha has so many meanings. One of it is one of the titles of Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. She is Al Kautha. The other meaning is the abundance of things. al kawthar huwa al khayru al kathir, an abundance of goodness. God is telling the Prophet, we're going to give you an abundance of children, an abundance of goodness, because when his son died in Mecca, Quraysh, they were chiding the Prophet, reprimanding him and ridiculing him, that see, you have no children, you are actor. One of them stood at the gate of the sacred mosque and said, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الْأَبْتَرِ Muhammad who is actor, who has no offspring, no children, has just arrived, which hurt the feelings of the Prophet. He was deeply hurt. God said to him, 
We will give you an abundance of children, not one or two. We will give you millions and millions, millions of children, everywhere you go today. On this planet Earth, you see the offspring of the Prophet. How many of them are here in this room tonight? Raise your hand. If you are the children of the Prophet, raise your hand. Alhamdulillah. How many on this side? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. See? So God said to him, we will give you an abundance of children. The other meaning of Kawthar is the pond or the fountain which we're going to arrive onto it on the day of judgment out of thirst. That day is the day of hunger and day of thirst. This is why the Prophet says when you get hungry in the month of Ramadan, when you get thirsty, تَذَكَّرُوا فِيهِ بِجُوعِكُمْ وَعَطَشِكُمْ جُوعَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَعَطَشَ Remember when you are now, nowadays, of course we don't get a lot of hunger here. Yeah. The weather is nice. Neither a lot of thirst. A lot of food. Hmm? Also a lot of food. Yes, a lot of food and a lot of drink. We overeat, mashallah, at you know. So this is why we, we all have acid reflex, so... Don't eat too much, eat moderate. The Prophet says, remember when you are thirsty during the fasting, remember the thirst of that day. This is nothing comp compared to that day. This is not a thirst. The real thirst is that day. So what do we do? Where is the water? Where is the water there? There is only one source of water, and that is the pond of Kotha. And the Prophet is going to stand there, the Saqi, the one who gives the water, who is he on that day? Imam Ali. Imam Ali al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. At the instructions of the Prophet, he gives water for those who are thirsty. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day said, that I'm going to stand there, some of my companions are going to come, Asking for water, God says, do not give them water. They don't deserve. I say, why? He said, Oh Prophet, you don't know what happened after your death. Yes, they were your companion during your lifetime. But after your death, they retracted back on their heels. They went back. So don't give them, they don't deserve what. But inshallah, those who remain steadfast and firm on the path of the Prophet وسلم, and his family, they will drink from that pond, the pond of Kawthar. And it will, we will be very thirsty and when you get a cup, only a cup, you don't have to eat, drink that much. It will, it will, Crunch your thirst, your thirst. You don't feel thirsty anymore when you drink one cup of that water. And then in paradise there are different springs and fountains with different flavors. Every fountain has its own flavor which we're going to mention right now. And they are mentioned in the Quran. These are the verses of the Quran. Number one. God says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي ظِلَالٍ وَعُيُونَ Surah Al-Mursilat When he describes the pious and how they live in paradise, he says they are in ظِلَالٍ ظِلَالٍ means what? Plural of what? ظِل وَظِلٍ مَمْدُودٍ وَمَاءٍ مَسْكُوبٍ وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرَةٍ لَا مَقْطُوعَةٍ وَلَا مَمْنُوعَةٍ ظِل What is ظِل? Shade إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي ظِلَالٍ وَعْيُونَ Springs and fountains. Why among all the luxuries of paradise, God focuses on shade and water? Why? Why on shade and water? They are number one. Because water is life normally. Because in the summertime, imagine yourself in a desert. In, in a scorching sun and what do you need the most when you are traveling in a desert number one you look for what 
shade. And number two, you look for what? Water. This is your first, first thing that you look for. The day of judgment, the day of judgment has a scorching heat without a sun, of course. There is no sun. The sun has been extinguished. But the Quran and the Hadith says that day is a day of boiling heat. So once you enter paradise, what do you expect? What is the first thing you need to see in paradise? Number one, shade. And number two, water. And this is what they're going to provide you. In Surah Al-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are two gardens in paradise, two levels. In one garden, this is the lower garden. In the lower garden, there are two springs that are nadhakhatan. Nadhakhatan, it means bubbling. Bubbling. <coughs> Two springs that are bubbling. This is in the lower garden. In the higher garden, Allah says, Fihima aynani tajriyan. There are two types of fountains and, and, and springs that they are flowing tajriyan. In the lower one, bubbling. In the higher one, flowing. And all the drinking water of paradise comes from where? Kauta. From these sealed bottles? No, from the Kauta. Huh? Kauta. Yeah. From different, from different springs, some of them they spring, they gush forth from the throne of God. From Arsh rahman The water comes from there. So, in Surah Al-Insan, what do you read in Surah Al-Insan? These are the flavors. We come now to the flavors. Have you seen when you go to Starbucks, which you should not go anymore in the old days? There are flavors. All these drinks, they have the flavors. And if there is no flavor in the drink, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not tasty. You have to have some flavor. Same thing in paradise. But the flavors of paradise are different from the ones here. The ones here are artificial, you know, sugary, temporary. But that one, it has an effect. When you have a flavor, when you have a drink, a cup of a drink in paradise, it has a spiritual effect on you. So the first one, Allah says, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ يَشْرَبُونَ مِنْ كَأْسٍ كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا the pious, the righteous, they drink from a cup, cats, cup. Kana mizajuha, the mixture of it, kana mizajuha, what? No, no, the beginning, beginning of chapter 76, Surah Al Insan. Kana mizajuha, kafura, kafura, kafura. However, kafura, maybe here we don't drink kafura. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't taste good. But the scholars, they say, the names are similar to the names of the worldly drinks. But the substance is completely different. So it could be called Zanjabil or Kamfur or this or that. The name is this, a similar name, but the taste, the substance, completely different. Kana mizajuha kafura aynan yashrabu biha ibadullahi they make it gush, gush forth abundantly. So this is the first drink. At the time of the Prophet, in that community, in that society around the Prophet, they used to consider camphor the best type of fragrance at that time. Before France came and, and introduced the French, you know, French fragrances <coughs> and colognes. Or the toilet. At that time, at that time, camphor was the best fragrance, the best taste. So they will give you, inshallah, a drink with a mixture of camphor. This is number one. Number two, there is another spring called tasneem. 
By the way, Tasneem is also a name of a female. Sometimes in some cultures, in some countries, they call their daughters Tasneem. And I'm going to tell you the meaning of Tasneem. Allah says, وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمِ In Surah Al-Mutaffifin. وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمِ عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ And, and whose mixture is of tasneem, a spring where the muqarrabin, muqarrabin are the closest one to God. They drink from it. And tasneem, mu'mineen, is the purest and noblest drink of paradise. And it, they say it is, it flows, it flows from the divine throne, from the divine throne of paradise, Arsh rahman It springs from there, originates at the divine throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the name of Tasneem? Tasneem comes from what? What is the root? What is the origin of Tasneem? The origin of Tasneem is Sanama. And Sanama is to rise. To rise. And to ennoble. So those who drink from Tasneem are going to rise. Have you seen some kids here when they drink something? Of substance, they say he feels high. He feels high. So those who are going to drink from Tasneem are going to feel high. Are going to feel intoxicate, intoxicated. But it's a good way, a good form of intoxication. These intoxications here, they destroy your health. Maybe they, someone feels high, maybe. But after that, they have to pay the price. After that, they feel down immediately after that. In paradise, when you feel high, you're not going to feel down later on. Always high. Always high. So, this tasneem, tasneem is going to be given in two forms. To two groups of people. One group, ashabul yameen, people of the right. People of the right, they do not give them the purest form of tasneem. They mix it with another type of wine. They don't give them the purest form. But the muqarrabin, which is the highest level, those are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are in the first class compartment. They're going to drink the purest form of tasneem. Fakhruddin al-Razi, Muhammad ibn Umar Fakhruddin al-Razi. Why he's, his last name is Razi? Razi Ahsant. People who were born and raised in the city of Ray, which is next to Tehran. Tehran is a new city. The old one, the ancient one is Ray, Shahra Ray. It's very ancient. So people who were raised in that city or born in that city are called Ar-Razi. Razi. This is an ancient name. So this man, though he is from the Caspian Sea region, from Mazandaran, but, uh, but he was raised and he was buried also in Shahrarai. This is considered the greatest Sunni interpreter of the Holy Quran in the Sunni tradition. The greatest one is Fakhruddin al-Razi. Muhammad ibn Umar Fakhruddin al-Razi. He says in his book, in his tafsir, he says tasneem, tasneem is the delight, the delight of gazing upon the face of God. The delight of gazing upon the face of God. You know, my friends, in the other madahib, other schools of thought, they firmly believe that people who go to paradise, they're going to see the face of God. Not a metaphor. The physical face of God. This is what they believe in. In the school of Ahlul Bayt, we do not believe in this. 
Because God does not have an actual and physical and material face. Face is mentioned in the Quran. أَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wherever you turn your face, فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ You find the face of God there. But face in this context, is it material and physical or spiritual? It is spiritual. Spiritual. God does not have physical face. Because if you bring God and create physical face for Him, you're going to what? You're going to limit God. This is what Christians believe about God. Christians believe that Jesus is God. So they limit God in the body of a human being. And that does not happen. God is unlimited. God encompasses everything and nothing encompasses God. Nothing can encompass God. God encompasses the entire universe. So neither in this life and when Allah said to Musa, إِنَّكَ لَن تَرَانِي لَن لِلْتَأْبِيدِ لَن it means neither and never here nor in the hereafter. You cannot see the face of God. You can see the reflection of God, but not his face, not his physical face. And this is a big debate between theologians, philosophers, scholars, of the Sunni tradition and the Shia tradition. A big debate about this. But Fakhruddin al-Razi, you know, being from the school of the companions, he believes that Tasneem is the joy and the delight of gazing, gazing upon the face of God. So Muqarrabeen, why Muqarrabeen are given the Tasneem and mixed? Pure tasneem, pure drink of tasneem. Why? And why Ashab al Yameen are going to be given this drink but mixed, not in the purest form? What is the difference between them? Because according to him, Muqarrabun are always going to gaze at the face of God and nothing else. Whereas Ashab al Yameen, 50 50. They're going to look at the face of God and they're going to look at other objects in paradise. Therefore, they deserve a mix, mixed drink, not the purest form of a drink. This is a Sufi translation, a Sufi understanding and approach to the understanding of the verses of the Quran. And then what is the third type of drink or spring? Ahsanti, sal sabil, mashallah. So the Quran says in Surah Al Insan, wa yusqawna fiha ka'san kana mizajuha zanjabila. They're going to be given a cup which is made of a mixture of ginger. But again, not the ginger of this life. Some people like ginger here, some people do not like it here. The name is ginger, but the substance is something completely different, as I mentioned in the previous nights. The Prophet says you're going to encounter things in paradise that never even crossed your mind or your eyes or your ears or your taste. Completely new, completely new. The name could be the same. But the nature and the substance is different. So, وَيُسْقَوْنَ فِيهَا كَأْسًا كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا زَنْجَبِيلًا They're going to be given this cup of mixture made of zanjabil. Zanjabil, which is ginger. What is zanjabil in Farsi? Zanjabil. And in Urdu? Adrak. Alhamdulillah. Adrak. Aynan fiha tusamma salsabila. A spring. This mixture comes from a spring, a fountain called salsabil. So the name of that spring is what? Salsabil. And what is the meaning of salsabil? Salsabil, they say, it's also made of two terms. 
contraction of two terms. One is sell, sell to seek. The other is sabil, sabil is the way, the path. So sell, sabil, ask for the way, ask for the way of paradise, the way of salvation, the way of comfort. So why they say Zenjabil? Because Zenjabil is a delicacy that is used to be considered during the time of the Prophet as, as a medicine, and is still today is considered as a medicine, plus what? Medicine and spice. Yes, oh, and a spice. Mixture of these two. Medicine and spice. And they say they are going to be given this because it is easy to swallow and it refresh, refreshes your, your throat. So this is the drink of Salsabil. How many drinks so far we mentioned? In Surah Al-Insan, at the beginning of the Surah, it mentions Kamfur. At the end of the Surah, it mentions Zanjabil. Because they say, they say these two drinks, Kamfur and Zanjabil, they have two different natures. The Kamfur is, have you tasted Kamfur, Kamfur or not? The nature of it, it's cold. Whereas Zanjabil and ginger is what? Is hot. So to create a balance, they have two types of drinks. The one which is cold in nature and the second that which is hot in nature to create a balance. Both of them are mentioned in the Quran. The comfort and the, the ginger. Coffee and fa? Frap, yes. So it's, it's hot and cold? Yes. Or sometimes you go and, and you have the ice cream with, with, the, with the pie. The pie is hot and the ice cream, wow, I'm missing this. I'll get it after the lecture, inshallah. So these are some of the springs and fountains of paradise. The first one before we enter paradise is what? The pond of Kothar. And by the way, the pond of Kothar, though we drink it before paradise on the day of judgment, but the roots of it, are in, in paradise. The root of it are in paradise. And in paradise there are plenty, plenty, plenty of rivers. Numerous rivers in paradise. We've been told that every garden, every mu'min, every believing men and women, in their property, in their garden, in their home, they have their own spring, their own river, gushing forth and streaming. Well, of course, there are other names for these, mount, uh, for these rivers. One of them is Nahrul Rahmah. Nahrul Rahmah. You are not going to be short on water or a drink in paradise. Here, sometimes, we have in this life, we have drought. Alhamdulillah, this year in California, we don't have a drought. Maybe, maybe we are out of a drought. But in every place on earth, sometimes they suffer from drought, shortages of drinking water. It's very painful when I read the news about Gaza and the people of Gaza. They don't have a drinking water, no drinking water, let alone clothing or a shelter or food, no drinking water. This is a disaster. This is a disaster. Only those who are really wicked, they cut off the supply of water from people. And it happened. Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, he did this. Yazid, his son, after so many years, he did this. Muawiyah did this with Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin. They captured the bank of the Euphrates and they said to the Imam Ali and his army, no drinking water. So they came to Imam Ali, they said to him, no drinking water, how can we fight? Imam Ali said, if you don't get them off of the bank of the Euphrates, you're going to die, you're going to be defeated. 
So if you don't want to be defeated and die, then you have to attack your enemies, clear them off the bank of the Euphrates. And this is what they did. Within two hours, they cleared the army of Muawiyah. So now Imam Ali's army in, is in that position. Some people came to him, they said, Ya Amir al muminin let's deprive Muawiyah and his army from drinking water. He said, no, we don't do this. Water has to be available even for our enemies. I'm not the one who deprives my opponents from drinking water. Subhanallah, 30 years later, on the bank of the Euphrates, same river, same river, but at the time of Imam Ali, it was in the north, the northern part of the Euphrates, Al-Ambar. Now it's in Karbala. Maybe, maybe 150 kilometers, you know, 200 kilometers difference. Yazid did the same. Ibn Ziyad did the same. They occupied the bank of the Euphrates and they cut off the supply of water from the son of Imam Ali, Imam Hussein. And Imam Hussein and his family, they died thirsty on the bank of a river. Thirsty on a bank of a river. This is exactly what Israel is doing today to the people of Gaza. Many of them are dying of malnutrition, of starvation, of thirst. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the victory for them. And Nasr, inshallah, the victory and salvation for all of them. We will continue, inshallah, on the description of paradise in the Quran. We have to speak about now the clothing, the jewelry of paradise. Also, we're going to speak about the men of paradise and women of paradise. Hurul Ain, Wildan al Mukhaladun, on the food of paradise, what type of foods we have in paradise. One night, we're going to speak about wine in paradise different type of wines. But it is not intoxicating, yeah? Rivers, rivers of wine, but not intoxicating, not like this wine here, which damages people's life. It doesn't damage there. There promotes, it gives energy. We will speak about that. And inshallah, tomorrow we're going to celebrate the birthday of our second Imam, Al Imam Al Hassan Al Mujtaba, alayhi salatu was salam. So try to be here at 8:30, inshallah. Allahumma akbar al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. Inna ka mujibu al da'awat. Inna ka ghafir al khati'at. Allahumma taqabbal salatana wa siyamana wa du'aana wa ajjil fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al asri wa zaman. وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء وشهداء غزة وفلسطين ولبنان ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم